Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick Maths module on fluid dynamics. This video is about properties of fluid. Uh, there are five properties of fluids that we will consider in this video. The first one is uh, the density, is the fluid density denoted by the Greek symbol rho. It is defined as the mass of the fluid per unit volume and it has dimensions of mass per length cubed and SI units of kgs per meter cubed. If the density of uh, the fluid occupying a volume omega is not uniform, then one can use a field to describe the density, rho as a function of the spatial coordinates x, t, where t is time. The mass of the fluid inside this volume is then given by the integral over omega of the density over the volume. If the density of a fluid does not depend on the spatial coordinates or on time, for example, water in day-to-day -day circumstances, then the fluid is termed as incompressible. Sample values of density are that the density of air is about 1.2 kgs per meter cube at mean sea level and temperature and, and uh, the density of water is about 1000 kgs per meter cube. Water and air can be considered to be incompressible in most situations but for certain high speed flows for example aircrafts flying through air, uh, air uh, should be considered as compressible. Water in most circumstances is incompressible except if you are uh, considering uh, phenomena like propagation of sound which is by definition uh, an in, uh, an, a compressible phenomena. The next property we will consider of a fluid is the fluid pressure uh, denoted by small p. Uh, the fluid pressure is defined as the force exerted by a fluid normal to a surface per unit area of that surface. It has uh, dimensions by this definition of force per length squared uh, which translates to m over lt squared in the mlt system and it has SI units of newton per meter squared or kilograms per meter second square, which has a special symbol called Pascal in SI units. It can be used to find or to express the force exerted by a, an ideal fluid on a surface S. An ideal fluid is a fluid which has zero viscosity. We will see this next. Uh, but if you have a surface S with a unit normal N hat pointing away from the fluid, then the force due to pressure is given by the area integral of pressure integrated uh, times the unit normal integrated over the area. The next property we will consider, uh, the third property is the fluid dynamic viscosity or simply the viscosity or the Newtonian viscosity. It's denoted by the Greek letter mu and is defined as the proportionality constant between the shear stress sigma and the shear rate gamma. So here uh, sigma is mu times gamma dot, sorry, the shear rate is gamma dot. It has dimensions of force times time divided by length squared, uh, which in the MLT system is M divided by LT. Uh, it has the psi units of kgs per meter second, and which is equal to Pascal times seconds. We are going to see applications of viscosity later in this chapter. Sample values of viscosity are 10 to the minus five Pascal second for air, and 10 to the minus three Pascal seconds for water. The next quantity, the fourth quantity, the fourth property of fluid we will con fluids we will consider is the kinematic viscosity, denoted by the Greek letter nu. 
and defined as the ratio of mu to rho, uh, the ratio of dynamic viscosity to the density. It has dimensions of length squared over time and SI units of meter square per second. It's called kinematic viscosity because the dimensions of this quantity do not contain mass, the mass m. Again, uh, we will see applications of kinematic viscosity in chapters 3 and 7. The fifth and the last property of the fluid we will consider is the surface tension of the liquid interface. Uh, we will denote it with the Greek letter sigma, although you will note that we have also denoted shear stress with sigma. Later, we will drop the sigma for the shear stress and only use it for surface tension. Uh, the surface tension characterizes the fact that the liquid interface under tension uh, behaves like the surface of a trampoline. Let me show you what I mean with a little demo. In this demo, I have some water in a petri dish and I start with a small tissue paper floating on the surface of water and I use that to gently release a paper clip on the surface of water. I will sink the tissue paper and you will note that the paper clip continues to float on the surface of water. Now this paper clip is made of uh, steel so it is heavier uh, than water but it still floats. The reason why it floats is because the surface of water acts like a trampoline and exerts an extra vertical force on the paper clip. You can also see this depression in the water surface. You can also see the depression in the water surface because of the weight of the paper clip. So this extra force of surface tension causes the paper clip to float on the surface of water even though uh, it is made of a material which is heavier than water. In order to understand this behavior, uh, let us consider um, how one expresses surface tension and the force exerted by the surface on its boundary. The definition of surface tension is the tension in the liquid interface expressed as force per unit length. According to this definition, it has dimensions of force per unit length, F over L, which translates to M over T squared in, uh, in the MLT system. It has SI units of newtons per meter, which translate to, which are equivalent to kg per second square in the uh, kilogram meter second system and in the MKS system and it so happens that it has the same units as joules per square meter. It has it can be expressed as energy per unit area. We will perhaps invoke this interpretation of surface tension as energy per unit area later in this module. But the way one uses surface tension is uh, very similar to pressure. You can think of surface tension as uh, pressure but in two dimensions acting along the interface. Right? Uh, to illustrate this, uh, consider a soap film which is attached to a wire frame. Okay? The curve formed by the wire frame I will denote C and little t hat is a unit vector that is tangent everywhere to the wire frame. The unit vector capital N hat is everywhere normal to the surface of the soap film, including on the interface, uh, sorry, including on the wireframe. And the little N hat in red is the cross product between the two. It's defined as capital N hat, capital N hat cross T hat. All right. So you will note that this vector little n hat is in fact normal to the boundary 
of the soap film, but it is tangent to the surface of the soap film. So with this little n hat, the force exerted by the interface on the boundary can be expressed as the integral along the boundary curve C of the coefficient of surface tension sigma times uh, n hat dl. It's an area integral. Uh, typical values for surface tension are sigma for water is 72 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons per meter. And it varies with temperature, but usually one can assume this to be a constant. Actually, that's not true. Uh, there are applications where one has to consider the surface tension varying from point to point and has to treat the surface tension as a field. Uh, I don't think we will see those examples in this module. Uh, now to explain the floating paper clip, consider a small section of the wire that forms the paper clip of length dl and uh, the curve in blue is the shape of the water interface. Uh, the arrows in red show the unit vector n hat which are everywhere parallel to the interface but normal to the boundary curve and because of the depression of the water surface you will see that n hat has a vertical component and therefore when you calculate the force because of the interface on its boundary the integral of n hat sigma is a constant so it comes out of the integral and the integral of n hat everywhere has a vertical component which adds up to give an additional force uh, gives rise to an additional force on the paper clip that helps it float even though it's heavier than water so these are the five properties of the fluid uh, the density the pressure the two viscosities and surface tension that we will use in this module. We will introduce other properties as they are needed, but these are these will be very commonly used. So the, this concludes this video on the properties of fluids. Uh, I will see you again in the next video or in one of the live lectures. Bye.